Hey hey and welcome back. This is part two of the player controller that we are making. And so far we have a player that can move left and right and jump. Currently he can jump up infinitely. So let's start by creating a way to determine if he's standing on the ground to only be able to jump if he's standing on the ground. Okay. So we will begin by modifying our player a bit. Let's add a component, an empty component on a uh, game object on him, and we can call it ground. This will determine where the ground is touching the player and give it a, a yeah, an icon so it, we, it is more visible. Then we will move it to the position of the ground. Let's move it down, and somewhere around there should be good. Okay, and then we can move into the play script. Okay, so now we need to make a variable to reference our ground object. Let's make a new serialized field here. Private transform oh. transform ground level, we can call it. Go back inside Unity. And then we can drag the ground to the ground level. So, and we also need another variable to determine if he's grounded. So, private is grounded. And we could do this in the Boolean, but in the future, we want to know what kind of object he is standing on. So it's better for us to just make it into a collider instead. Like that. So now we can use our fixed update and send out an overlap box to determine if we're touching anything. So we can set is grounded equals to physics 2d.overlap box. And that box is like making an imaginary box that starts at point. It has the size of this variable that we give it. It has an angle. We will set it to zero. And we will be using this constructor. It also takes a layer mask, which determines what layers we will check if we are colliding with. And every time we collide with something in this imaginary box, we set the object that we're colliding with to this. So let's determine what where we should start, and we should have the center of our overlap box at the ground level. So ground level dot position. Now we need the size. So let's make a component up here, uh, a variable up here for the size. Private. Vector two box size. Oh. And then in the wake method, we can set the size of the box equals a new vector two. And the x value should be the same size as our player's width. And the player's width we can get from the collider that is currently on the player. So we need a reference to the collider. So let's make a variable here private collider mm, capsule collider cc. And let's get it cc equals to get component capsule collider. So then we can set the cc dot size dot x and the y size should be something quite thin so we can just set it to 0 0.1 to start with then we can put box size here in our overlap box we don't want an angle on our box so we should be zero 
Now we need a layer mask. So let's go start create another layer in Unity. You do it by pressing the layer drop down and add a layer. Let's call this layer ground. So let's assign everything that we the, we want to be the ground to the layer ground. So this should be on the layer ground. So now we can go back to the script and we need to determine what the layer mask should be. So we can make another serialized field here. Serialized field private layer mask ground layer. And here we put our ground layer that we just created. Go back inside of Unity. This will come up. And then we say what which of these layers are the ground? And it's the one named ground. So we just select it. Now we can test. No, we're not done yet. Uh, if we are grounded, we can do the jump. So if grounded, if you have pressed jump and is grounded, if it's not no, if you have hit something, this will be not no, and then it will evaluate it through here. So if you are jumping, press space, and we are grounded, then we can do it jumping. Save, go back inside Unity, and let's try it out. If I press space multiple times, nothing will happen. But we can see here that if I press space in the air, it will jump automatically once it hits the ground. That's because when we are pressing space, this will become true. And this will be true until we hit the ground, and then we will jump, and then it will be set to false. So we need to alter this slightly. We can actually move this is grounded check inside of the jump method. So let's do like this instead. Is grounded. Then we will do all of these. Except for this, this we can move outside. We will set do jump equals to false whether this is true or not. Doesn't matter. Now if we try it again. You see? We can't jump until we are grounded. Perfect. Let's make him double jump. So let's create another variable. Uh, private integer um, maximum air jumps, we can call it. So this will determine how many times he will be able to jump in the air. So instead of restricting ourselves to a double jump, we can now determine how many times he can jump extra in the air. We set this to one for a double jump feature. Then another variable private int jumps left. This will determine how many jumps we have left. In the awake method, we can set jumps left to equal air jumps. Now, in our jump method, we want to see how many jumps we have left instead of only is grounded. And if we have jumps left, we will be able to jump. Uh, actually, we should make a new method private void prepare jump just to make it more clean. And we will actually move this again to this place if is grounded. We will do a jump like so. And then, if you are not grounded, 
But we have jumps left, jumps left, greater than zero. We will also jump. And lastly, we will set the do jump variable to false. Like so. And if we have made a jump while only while having jumps left, we should decrease jumps left by one. And also, every time we are grounded, we should refill our jumps left. So in the fixed update, we will check if is grounded. Then we should set our jumps left back to air jumps. And finally, we need to change this to call prepare jump instead of jump. Okay, let's move back into Unity and try it out. You can still jump as before, and if you press multiple times, you can press two times. And then we fall down, back down. Can't press any more than two. If we change this into three, then we should be able to jump four times in total. One, two, three, and four, and then no more. Perfect. So now our double jump or multi jump feature is working. All right, now we're done with this part. In the third and last part, I will show you a bug that arises from this method and uh, I will show you how to solve it. And lastly, we will add a functionality that allows us to fall through some of the platforms, similar to Pinaria, the game, if you have played it. So, see you then.